Good afternoon and welcome to Tito the Troddler. Here we go again. Uh, this time we're up at Malham. And see you see there we've got Malham Town. Uh, yep, and uh, first thing to say, note to oneself, when you're gonna go on a wild camp, take your time before you leave. I used to criticise my wife for this, and now I'm gonna have to realise that when you're gonna be setting off somewhere, you just take your time a little bit and make sure that you've got everything before you come set off because I've ended up coming all the way up here and I haven't brought my uh, walking sticks uh, I've left them at home I think I've also left my money at home so if I need any money I'm up the creek as well but yeah so not to oneself so it's going to make this task an awful lot harder especially considering I've got a pack on that's heavier than a sack from the Brinks Mac robbery so it's all going to be good fun and games so hopefully the knees will stand up I've gone for comfort this time so I've got lots of gear I've even brought my chair which I'm really excited about I've uh, brought the uh, the blood bag and the plasma bag which I'll show you later on but uh, anyhow uh, the sun isn't shining but it's trying to break through there's a little bit of blue sky and we're on our way up to Fountains Fell which is a uh, walk I did a few few weeks well a month or two ago with uh, Steve Eaton and uh, my good friend they were a recce really for this wild camp so we're going up to Fountains Fell Tarn we plan on spending the night there I've got uh, all sorts to eat as well so all really exciting but I hope you enjoy the video side now of uh, uh, the Malham Activity Centre, we're still near the town, as you can see in the background because of the sun, but uh, uh, yeah, uh, we've just come past, see my, uh, you can see this hair there, wooden hair, I've had that in one of the pictures before, so yeah, so we're about, I don't know, maybe a quarter way up, more or less now, so we're on part of Pennine Way, so the one good thing about today is uh, the track is quite good. And uh, well, like I said, I've obviously wrecked this walk before, so I know where I'm going, which is also good. So all I've got to hope is when I get up to the town, I can find a dry spot to, to pitch. And if we've got that, then we've cracked it. But uh, yeah, we're travelling on all right. As long as we stay dry, we'll be okay. Right, we're on the other side of uh, tenant, what's known as Tenants Gill now, and uh, we just started to climb now. It's a shame, it looked like some were going to come out and do. We're going to end up with glorious, you know, thinking about stargazing and everything tonight. I know it's clouded over again, so I'm praying that it breaks back through again, because it'd be really pleasant if it did. But I mean, nonetheless, if it stays like this, I'll take this. But yeah, uh, I don't know if you can see behind me there, yeah. So we're away from the madding crowd of Malham now, so it's quite good now. I, I haven't seen anybody. There might be one or two on here because obviously it's part of Pennine Way, so it's quite obviously popular. But um, this is where it starts to come into its own. But we've got about two thirds at climb already done, and I've got to tell you, this pack is really, really heavy. But it's not a long journey in this, so fingers crossed uh, and path's good. So you know, fingers crossed, we can get to the top of this hill now in the next sort of hour or so, um, and then we can start looking at setting up camp. Uh, but yeah, so far so good. Um, I'm going to try and think up some factoids for you tonight uh, once I've got camp set up. But uh, yep, yeah, keep watching. Right, happy campers or troddlers. Uh, here we are. We're here at uh, Fountains Fell Town. Uh, really, really pleased. Just come off the uh, Pennine Way path, and um, I uh, just thought I'll try and go go off, oh, just off piste and see if we can take the short version up to here rather than going to the the cairn and up to the summit. I just wanted to get to the town really, that's all I'm here for today. I'm not, I've been and done the summit many times. So uh, so yeah, just a quick spin round. So here we are. We've got views all across the dales. So absolutely fabulous. And uh, we found a dry spot next to, right next to the town. So we're gonna get camped up here. There's a little bit of breeze, but uh, we've got a relatively, bit rocky, but a relatively bit of flat, flat ground. So we'll, t we'll take this uh, and we'll get set up and uh, get a brew on.
Right, uh, uh, last time I uh, came on a camping trip, uh, it was a bit of a long hike into, uh, into the camp and by the time I got there I was absolutely exhausted so I never did anything, any sort of a review. So first of all, uh, I'm going to do a review. So first of all, the tent. The tent is a Scarp 1 tent um, and it comes from America and uh, John Cartwright put me onto this tent, uh, my good friend John Cartwright who we're hoping to get on a few troddles with. Um, and he's got one of these uh, but the main reason I bought it is it's a one man tent and it it's only weighs one and a half kilos so it's perfect for, for carrying uh, uh, when you're on your own and uh, there's loads of room inside as you'll see anyhow so we'll have a look inside so on this side I tend to uh, just uh, keep my clothes so I've got a dry sack with some clothes in it and I've got my rucksack and I keep it because I've emptied my rucksack out and everything's at that side. I've also got my new uh, uh, camp shoes which uh, I'm looking forward to wearing as soon as I take these boots. So I'll just go and get some water in a bit and then uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll sort that out. So inside the tent. Down with it. Sorry. I'll have to put you down one second. Right, so inside the tent, what have we got? So we've got uh, uh, we've got the Thermarest, uh, I think it's a Neotherm uh, mat at the bot bottom, which, which is absolutely fantastic, and it's a little bit wider, so for people that sleep on the side like me is uh, excellent. I've got a Seal to Summit pillow. Um, I've got my new Thermarest uh, Hyper, what's it called now? Hyperion uh, 20. Um, which I'm really looking forward to. That's so much lighter than my four season sleeping bag. And I've also bought a. Sorry, the uh, doors just getting in the way. I've also bought this uh, silk liner, which is uh, uh, has a bit of um, temperature if you if you require it, and it keeps your bag clean. Uh, so this is my little comms pack. So in here I've got like a head torch, and I've got my earplugs. I've got a, a little mini speaker. I've got. Um, uh, a power pack and what have you, so that's, that's obviously the communication pack. Then round to the other side. First of all, I'm really glad I've dragged this thing up. This is my little bit of luxury, is this my uh, Trekology chair. It weighs about a kilo, but God, I'm going to look forward to sitting on that tonight. And look, a bit of sunshine, look, it's happening. Uh, so this side of, uh, uh, thing is, is, is cooking. So uh, as you can see, we've got to start off, we've got a uh, thing I'm going to go and do next is I'm going to go and fill this bladder up with water. This is my uh, uh, Grail uh, GeoPress uh, water purifier, absolutely fantastic, really easy to use, and uh, it means I can get lots of water uh, pretty easily. I've got uh, my food pack, which is quite large, I've got to say, uh, and I've got bacon and eggs, and I've also got well, I'll tell you what, I'll do a little video on what, what I've got for later on because um, it's quite. Uh, quite different to what I normally have anyhow. So I've got that and then uh, I've got my little cascade table which is perfect. As you can see uh, we've got the uh, plasma or should I say brandy and we've got uh, the blood transfusion i.e. wine uh, and then I've got some bread and I've got my frying pan. Uh, what else have we got in here? I've got my cooking utensils and everything there. Uh, good little kit. And then I've got my MSR wind burner stove. And that's uh, more or less it. Oh, I've got a little, uh, I think it's called Fenex light, uh, light for uh, inside a tent as well. But that's more or less it. That's my setup. And um, uh, it's really easy to set up. The tents, you know, I'm getting used to it. Second time I've pitched it. it. Takes a bit of getting used to pulling everything tight and making sure it's uh, taut. So, uh, and so you can put cross poles on it. It makes it really, really taut. But I really don't need it in these conditions. It's uh, pretty about as good as it's ever going to get is this in fact sun's coming out even more so we might have been for a lovely evening and uh, like I said I've got a slurp of red and uh, something nice to eat so uh, keep tuned here we go a bit of steak hope you can hear me okay I ain't got the mic for uh, plugging but hopefully you can hear me all right but yeah we're going for steak peppercorn sauce beef and I've got some uh, dabs that I've cooked at home I just warm them up when I'm doing what I do so fingers crossed yum yum and there you have it folks, steak au poivre, um, dabs and petit pois and a nice uh, red from Bordeaux, St Emilion. If that ain't enough to uh, fill your boots, I don't know what will be.
Right, good morning campers. As you can see, the sun's just come up. We're about eight o'clock in the morning now. We've had a fabulous night last night. Uh, everything went according to plan. Uh, got some good photos, uh, what have you, so that's time behind us. I've taken everything out of the tent now, so once I've uh, finished cooking breakfast, uh, I can just drop the tent and then we can get on our way. But yeah, so we're baking an eggs this morning, so I'll try and get you a couple of pictures and what have you, but uh, yeah, it's been a, a fantastic camp. Uh, I don't think there's anything that I haven't got according to plan, so fingers crossed breakfast goes okay, and then uh, we'll speak to you soon. Right everybody, we're all packed up, uh, and as you can see, we've, uh, as always, left no trace, apart from a bit of flattened grass. Uh, this has been absolutely fabulous wild camp, I uh, love Fountain's Fell. A little bit of a factoid, because uh, I can't leave you out of factoid, I forgot to do you one, so your factoid for today is, or on this trip, is Fountain's Fell is named after Fountain's Abbey, or is because of its connection to Fountain's Abbey. So, um, obviously all the land over this neck of the woods, uh, prior to the Reformation, was uh, owned by monasteries all the way from Bolton Abbey all the way over here and basically everywhere you know everything went everything went to the Pope until uh, obviously Henry the Eighth decided he weren't having any of that so that's uh, your little uh, uh, factoid for today um, uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video I'm gonna do a little bit more on the way down so I'll say goodbye to you when I get back to the town Almost back at the car now. Uh, um, we've got Malentine behind us again, so we've come back the same way as we came uh, uh, yesterday. So really, really good uh, trip. Really, really enjoyed it. Weather stayed up. It's been overcast rather than sunny, which what we were expecting, but we had some good periods in there as well. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, obviously, I'd, I'd love it if you'd uh, press the subscribe button and subscribe to my channel, and also ring the bell, and then it'll tell you about any other. Uh, uh, videos that I put up but yeah keep watching people and I hope you're enjoying it until later uh, goodbye from Tito the Troddler <laughs>